and you're going to see coverage just like you are now. But those of you lucky enough to have ESPN2, well, there we will have primarily onboard coverage throughout the entire run. It's an experiment that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. White flag comes out. Jacques Villeneuve on his way to victory. Two key passing zones ahead. Will Al Unser Jr. try him? Al Unser Jr. may not. If he stays there, he has the championship anyway. But let's remember, little Al loves to race and loves most of all to win. Great shots as they go away from our cameras. You can see both cars off the racetrack over those very dirty rumble strips. But Villeneuve hanging on. He may make history here. The Canadian newspapers may be full of this man tomorrow, but Junior is closer than ever. Two incredible possibilities here. A championship and a first-time win for a very deserving young man and a team that has worked very hard all year. Another win in the column for the Reynards this year as well. Al Unser Jr. now really moving into where he has but one more chance, and that will come at Canada Corner. And to satisfy Barry Green, he only has half a perfect lap to do. Look at Al Jr. He's further behind than he was before. Al Unser Jr. Maybe he's set in a position to try to get a little momentum as he runs down through the kink. If he gets through the kink here, Villeneuve without trouble. Al Jr. is too far behind. He is too far behind unless Villeneuve throws this thing into the bushes. One critical corner. A lot of careful braking here as Jacques Villeneuve makes that turn. The race could be his. The championship looks like it's Little Al's. They make the final set of turns. Coming up to turn 14. A championship and a first-time winner decided as Jacques Villeneuve becomes the 212th driver since 1909 to win an IndyCar race. And Al Unser Jr. takes the championship for Penske Racing. Al wins his second championship, his first coming in 1990. And the celebrations will begin at both ends of the pits. Villeneuve pulls off the edge of the race course. Apparently, he stretched the fuel a right to the return. end. Uh, to racing by Firestone, by the terrific performance of Jacques Villeneuve. And never forget that Pac West, in the form of Mauricio Guzman in second place, has suddenly entered the ranks of the top team. So a lot of new things have happened in this race that are significant and are going to give shape to the way the season develops. So working the final lap now. Jack Villeneuve may in fact have his second IndyCar race wrapped up. Second place may still be in doubt as Guzman is still being attacked by Rob Bobby Rahal. There's Pruitt running under in fourth place. Christian Pittipaldi is going to come home with a fifth if he stays where he is. Boisel is sixth, Danner is seventh, Fasser is eighth, ninth is Danny Sullivan, and Brian Hurdy is tenth right now. None of those positions in contest as we watch the leader. At that early age, it could be his second IndyCar win. Boy, is this a future champion of IndyCar? Look how smooth. He knows there's a checkered flag waiting for him, and there it is. The first race of the IndyCar season is done. They celebrate. In Jack Villeneuve's pits, he has taken his second IndyCar victory. Guzelman comes across the line in second, followed by Ray Hall, followed by Scott Pruitt, then Christian Quite Fittipaldi Sharpie. in fifth. Run these cars right now just as hard as they can be run. So adhesion to the track is a little bit scary sometimes. There's Salazar in that yellow and green car going by. An experienced road racer, Eliseo Salazar, coming out of IMSA, but driving for Dick Simon here. A very, very fine performance for him today. 40 years old, a very veteran driver, but a rookie here at Indianapolis. No one has ever come from two laps down to win the Indy 500. The youngest winner thus far in the history of the race was Troy Rutman. Now, Jack Vilnev will be looking at a white flag and one final lap, a final two and a half miles. An unbelievable run. The story will be told that Jack Vilnev went two laps down on a penalty and fought his way back to the front of the field across the south chute for the final time in front of Bobby Unzer. Going by us, and he's looking really good, Paul. No problems. Ari Leyendijk staying right there, wants to get in that winner's picture. Jack Villeneuve on the back stretch. The magnitude of his achievement. Listen to the roar of the crowd. Back from two laps down. Only his second year. One more turn. The first.
first Canadian on his way to winning the Indianapolis 500. Jack Villeneuve on the home stretch. And the 79th Indy 500 has been won by Jack Villeneuve as Ari Leyendijk screams by on the outside. The young Canadian has taken the win. There's second place, Christian Fittipaldi. Third place is Bobby Rahal. Eliseo Salazar finishes in fourth. Robbie Gordon comes across the line in fifth place. And look at the despair of Leslie Goodyear. The jump on the pace car cost Goodyear the 500. Let's go to Gary. He does not make many mistakes. Nothing changes at the front of the order. They'll see the white flag this time. Four miles to go. Villeneuve, then Tracy. There is Vassar. Andre Rivera, Bobby Rahal. Fernandez, Pruitt, Fittipaldi. All answer the white flag. Christian Fittipaldi. Here. Scott Pruitt still hangs on to the back of Adrian Fernandez, and there's Christian Fittipaldi, who should have been right up with these leaders, except he lost track position with that fuel stop, and look at Johansson. Johansson running. He is running in 10th. He's in the top 10. Parker Johnstone is off and on, back on, trying to make up, still at the tail end of the leader lap, running 13. Emerson still running. You saw a quick glance of him, running 15, had that wheel problem earlier, but here's the battle. Can Jack Villeneuve hold off Paul Tracy? He does seem to be somewhat quicker, though Tracy's been closing under braking. On the final lap, Tracy's trying to stick with him. Get under braking, closes just a bit, but Jack's faster off the corner. Oh, Jack kicks up the dust. He has the right side wheels over the curving. Look down for a second, too, as he did that. Now back to that more traditional kind of head slightly cocked to the right as he moves into the kink. Fastest part of the racetrack, down between the trees. Through Thunder Valley, Canada corner now. Oh, Rivero's making a challenge on Vassar, he gets closer. Rivero, Ray Hall, they close. Coming to the final corner. Unchallenged now, Jack Villeneuve makes that final turn. Tracy drives her deep, but he protects second place as Jack Villeneuve climbs the hill, and he will take the checkered flag at the Texaco Haviland 200, the fourth win of his career, followed by a very heads-up Paul Tracy. Well, there's the celebration down in Newman Haas. They're real pleased with that second place. Nothing changes. Behind As Michael now. The and indeed, he seems to be catching him. Just a year and a week ago, Brian Herta injured so badly at Toronto. His career seemed to be uh, at least on hold temporarily as his legs recovered. He managed to come back, get this ride. Then he had a good start to the season, a bad middle part of the season. Look at him now. Here comes Herta as he makes his move on Michael, and he's got him with two laps to go. But no! Michael Maybe. comes back as Herta falters. But look at Villeneuve. Villeneuve is in the middle. Down. Villeneuve comes in on the charge. The white flag is out. Two miles to go. One lap as Villeneuve moves for the lead. Anything is possible. I think Herta missed a gear. I don't think he's in real mechanical trouble. I think he missed a shift. That's why he dropped suddenly back. Final set of corners now for these two. Jack Belnav has it, but Herta now has the challenge. Can he come up and close on Belnav? This is Belnav's canniest race. He's driven great races all year. This is his smartest, most patient, and he will extend his championship. Quick little straightaway ahead. Jack Belnav. And then Brian Herta, as Villeneuve screams for the checkered flag. Herta can't catch him. Villeneuve takes the win, taking the lead in the last lap. Brian Herta comes across in second. His teammate Vassar in third. Bobby Rahal in fourth. Jack Villeneuve has scored the victory here on the Burke Lakefront Airport, his fourth of the year and the fifth of his career. This time by, not since the Cleveland race in 1995, when Jack Villeneuve, currently the Formula One world driving champion, took Barry Green's team to victory lane. Has another team crew green driver done it? 
Right now, this man, Dario Franchitti, has a chance. Now, over the rise come Michael Andretti and Alex Zanardi with four miles to go to try to catch Franchitti. Franchitti turned up the wick a little bit that lap. He was only a second off Michael, but Al, uh, Alex Zanardi was almost two seconds quicker than Franchitti and a second quicker than Michael Andretti. He's trying to force this issue and get up and see if they can make something happen on this laps, last lap. Remember, it's four miles around. Right, Michael Andretti, huge tire failure, fifth gear, and into the braking zone. And into the into tire the wall. Tire. Michael had a, did you hear that? Yes, My, we did. Michael just said, just exactly, top of sixth gear, tire blue, coming down shredded, he Sorry, hit the right Michael, side wall, and now he's in the tires. Obviously, you hear him talking, he's okay, but two and a half miles to go for a second place podium finish. Right rear tire. How many times have we seen that on the last lap here at Road America? Alan Zer Jr.'s engine letting go back in 1996. Michael Andretti was the beneficiary of that incident. And Michael's had two tires let go this year, one for when he was leading a race and now in second place. The person who's gonna benefit from this the most is of course Christian Fittipaldi, his teammate. Nothing happens there. We'll elevate him up to third place and a podium finish. Alex Zanardi moves to second, barring any possible action by the officials after this race. But right now, it's all about this man, Dario Franchitti, who takes the checkered flag in first place for the first time in his kart career. And a day that began with so much promise for Goodyear and for Ford ends with a Honda Firestone car in victory lane. What they will call him, she said, well, we know we're not going to call him Alex. And there is Dario Franchitti. The fastest Scott in the series since the late Jim Clark. White flag, one more left. With his second consecutive victory in offering. Turn six and seven. Seven turns to go for Dario Franchitti. And Dreddy Pruitt and Zanardi remain in that order behind him. We've seen a lot with guys like Nigel Mansell. How many F1 races before he won his first one? It, a lot of times people have said it about Brian Herta. You can say the same about Dario. Once they learn how to win, to get that monkey off their back, it often comes in droves. This team's really clicking. He's been qualifying exceptional all year. Really ran, a, again, a really smart race today. The most successful driver for Team Cool Green since Jack Villeneuve went to the title with them in 1995, winning the Indy 500 along the way. The checkered flags wave. Dario Franchini picks up career win number two at the Molson Indy Vancouver. Michael Andretti, second, Scott Pruitt, third, and Alex Zanardi in fourth as Chip Vancouver. Benassi. A huge splash as he makes his way through the final puddle and waddles down the front straightaway after a dramatic inaugural Texaco Grand Prix of Houston. Fists in the air for Dario Franchitti as he accepts the checkered flag to Jan Bikas. And Barry Green accepts the congratulations. We are going to we'll try and get in next here. next time around for Paul Tracy. The only thing that can stop him is his own fuel tank. This will be a remarkable run if, in fact, he is able to make it all the way as the white comes out. And if, in fact, he would run out, how far can he coast? And can he coast and still keep everybody back? We've seen some races end exactly that way. Rick Mears, Johnny Rutherford ran to the finish that way. But now, fourth turn. Paul Tracy comes to the line. And look at this, an amazing victory as Paul Tracy takes his 14th career win. Paul Tracy, oh, unbelievable how far job, he was. Guys, in. Great job. Paul Tracy congratulates and thanks the crew. He carries that car with the help of that crew, an amazing distance in scoring his second win here at Milwaukee and the first since St. Louis in 19... And with Tony Kanaan off the edge of the track at 
pit out. Gary Gerald, can you update it? Yeah, we got, talked with him as he was headed back toward the pits. He just said a tire blew. I don't know if it was the front or the rear, but both of them clearly were down on that right-hand side. And boy, I'm still somewhat surprised that that car sets there at the end of pit road the way it does. And they're letting him finish this thing up. White flag. White flag comes out to the leader, Dario Franchitti. Dario and Paul Tracy have never finished one and two. They may just do it now. Christian Fittipaldi does not appear to be in attack position for Paul Tracy. In fact, Paul seems to be moving a little bit forward. Maybe they're going to try and get a nice formation when they cross the line. Dario Franchitti, should he win it, will be the eighth different winner this year as he works on his final lap. Tracy crossed the line 2.7 seconds behind last time around. Be Franchitti, then Tracy, Fittipaldi, Moreno, Pappas, and Fernandez. Those are the top six as they came to this final lap. Last driver to lead all of the laps. Yep, Dario Franchitti, Houston, last year. Great job, mate. Awesome job. One, two. Wonderful. One, two. And Team Great Green job. Great job, Kai. has well done. done it. Team Green finishes first and second, Franchitti, and then Paul Tracy. Christian Fittipaldi comes across in third, followed by Moreno, Pappas, and Fernandez. At a second a lap initially, then the next lap, uh, half a second. We had enough fuel, we thought we were going to turn it up towards the end, so uh, yeah, your we'll, we'll take this one. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Great to see you, well, so they did do it. There is the win. Dario Franchitti scores the fifth of his career, second of the season. Helio Castroneves stuck with it, made it across the line, and now Franchitti will have five points on Montoya as they head off in one week to Mid-Ohio. And Castroneves, he comes across the line in seventh place. One quick update. Uh, and the note from Dr. Steve Al just a little bit of room. Don't mistake that for not driving hard. Obviously, he's still driving. No mistake. No mistake. One lap to go, and they've got him lean down even more, Paul. Well, he's got plenty of pad. Boy, listen to the engine, though. No. You listen for any hiccup there. Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Watching Paul Tracy, he's still under power, circulating on the final lap. Dario Franchitti crossed the line, 13 seconds behind Paul Tracy in second place. Then Michael Andretti, Max Pappas, Brian Hurdem, Mauricio Guzman. That was the top five as they passed under the white flag, signaling one more lap to go. And here is the unofficial results. Tracy's going to take it. He takes the checkered flag. Great job, mate. Great job. Now, uh, the TV people may be talking to you on the radio, okay? And in fact, I'm on the radio. Paul Tracy, this is Paul Page. Congratulations. Nice job. He's doing just that while most of the action, as you said, is behind him. We're going to apologize for this in advance, owing to the length of the race and the, the time that we're running. We are not going to be able to interview Dario Franchitti at the end of this run, but it looks like in one lap you will see him win, and you will see the championship go on to California Speedway in Fontana, California, as his battle with Montoya continues, and he will take the points lead to the race at Fontana. There he is, Dario Franchitti, working the last lap. And the mindset for Dario Franchitti, very different than anyone else in this race. You can see the distance he's giving himself out to the walls, giving himself a few feet. He still has to stay on it, has to stay focused, has to concentrate. If he starts to slip out of concentration now for just a moment, he could throw it all away. But for Max Pappas, Fernandez, and the group behind him, they're all pushing extremely hard. Cristiano Damata comes into the pits. Of course, he has been reporting trouble. Paul Tracy will remain if he remains in position in third place in his ongoing battle with Michael Andretti in the points. But Dario Franchitti, who this year the Scotsman has proven to be the master of the temporary street circuits, and this is as tough as they come, in his quest for the championship, he has done everything required to this point. 
and he will leave here with nine points over Juan Montoya and with the victory. Max Pappas will now chase him to the line. Here comes Dario Franchitti, and Dario Franchitti takes the win at Surfer's Paradise. The Gold Coast is golden for Dario. Max Pappas will scream for the line in second place. Third place is Adrian Fernandez, despite the race-long battle. Kanan is not able to... He locks the rears up in there. Tracy still the leader. Unchallenged at the front. Nice and smooth here, Paul. One lap to go. Nice and smooth and careful. You're looking great. Two-way communication says it all. Vassar will have two chances to pass. This is one of them. And Elio's not going to give up that inside. There's just no way he's going to let Jimmy get him around the outside. Brian Herta was making a move at the same time going into that corner. And Herta got around Serbia. Herbie, Her, Herta gets fifth place away from Serbia. And now DeFerrin's all out over the back of Oriel Serbia. You know, Tagliani sitting right there, that blue and white car. He's been so bright, just carefully watching this battle work in front of him, but carefully not sticking his nose into the middle of it. Jimmy's only got two more chances here. The breaking zone at the end of this long straightaway. I don't think he's close enough. And then a desperate move would be towards the inside of the hairpin. But I think Castro Nevis has driven these last few quarters brilliantly. Tag is going to be the question. Can he get up there? Final corner for Paul Tracy. Off of the hairpin, the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach comes Anybody? to a conclusion. What a great drive, Paul. What a fantastic drive. And the pit crew did a great job, too. Just awesome, mate. I see you in the pit, victory lane. Paul Tracy, his 16th career win, his second at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, and his sixth on a street circuit. Watch a champ car for the first time on an oval in Europe. Okay, Paul, uh, plus 10. We need one more perfect lap. Be nice and smooth, nice and consistent here. Bring it home. One more perfect lap. Maybe the oldest cliche in race broadcasting is, at this point in the race, He's listening for every strange noise, but it is true. Well, in a press conference the other day with Dario Franchitti, someone said, well, really, everything's gone wrong that can go wrong this season. What else is there? And Dario thought about it for just a moment. He said, oh, there's actually quite a bit more that can go wrong. When you're Paul Tracy, he's let his lead come down now to 8.4 seconds. It's not a big deal. He's just going to be very precise. You don't want to lose focus. You still want to push his last lap. Still a minute 44, a little slower than the rest of the field. 139 miles an hour, still quick enough though. He's got plenty of margin here. He wants to stay focused, stay on the gas, but be just a little careful with everything he's doing. He crossed the line eight and a half seconds ahead of Fernandez. While he can slow it down and be careful, it's also dangerous to relax it too much. Then you ruin your rhythm, and that's when mistakes happen. Jan Bikas. Kenny Breck still goes by here, guys, with that bad-sounding engine, but the good news is that Scott Remke maybe doesn't have it right. It appears as though Kenny Breck may be able to bring that thing home, even though it doesn't sound healthy. And right now it looks for a potential podium finish for Kenny Breck. Paul Tracy working the final lap. And at this point, he has to be feeling pretty good about it. The last move up through Thunder Valley. Under the bridge at 13. The final turn, 14 ahead. Still an uphill drive. He crests the hill. The checkered flags are ahead. Left and right. Paul Tracy has taken the win in the Motorola 220. You heard him. He's got to lean right back in order to make it all the way back to the pit lane. And talk about how close some people have cut it on fuel. There comes Fernandez and Breck. You saw Canano at the edge of the course just trying to make it to the line on the last lap. Paul Tracy now buys her up. And he begins to salute the crowd here, pulling his belts off a little early and hoping that he makes it all the way around to win her. One word in with whoever it may be. White flag. Now we're going to see. Go. You got a slow car to head. Nice and smooth now. One more to go. Tony Sakali, Paul's engineer. 
Great engineer, great coach as well. A week ago, Tracy dropped all the way back to 22nd, came roaring up to the field, tipped the win. Similar performance at Long Beach in 17th, qualified position to the lead. This time he started on the outside of the front row. The pass actually, Frank Keaty's problem, less than Tracy's pass. Working the final lap. What a great finish it would be for these two drivers. Very close friends to the late Greg Moore. For Canadian Paul Tracy to win here in Vancouver would mean just a huge, huge amount to the Moore family. I would imagine it'd be a very emotional celebration. Michael Andretti has fallen off the pace and has begun falling back through the order as we continue to watch the lead. So far, they've been pretty well behaved. Checkered flags in the hands. Well, King again, and Paul, great job. Beautiful. Paul Tracy has taken right, the win. Well, Paul Tracy has taken the lead, taken the win. Congratulations to Paul Tracy. The real question is, how is Dario going to do this last lap and not breathe? Right now, all he's doing is getting the interval from his spotters. He can see both Max Wilson and Gidley in his mirror here. And he's going to slow down as much as possible to let these guys get up behind him. If Gidley doesn't get a shot at him going down into the chicane on the last lap, if he can't close up this interval, then it's a matter of getting through the chicane and hoping the car doesn't cough, doesn't run out of fuel, headed for the start-finish line. But look at the interval decrease here coming through turns three and four. Yeah, there mostly was a decrease under braking, though. It goes back to where it was. Wilson separates him. Gidley waits until the last possible second to break there. Working the final turns of the final lap. Well, there's Wilson. Gidley's got to get this exit exactly right. Stand on the throttle. Push the overtake button. And now he's got to run up behind. You can see he's closing down on Dario. His only chance will be coming off the chicane, headed for the start and finish line. It's going to be a difficult place to pass. They'll both swing as wide as they can. Gidley tries to work him. Gidley is there, but Dario Franchitti does it. Dario Franchitti holds him off. The question is, will he make it all the way around the track? Congratulations to Team Green. But you know what? Mamo drove one whale of a race. And there's Tang. Is Very intense young French Canadians. One here in the Atlantic. But for Michael Andretti, it's been a year since his last victory, which came here at Toronto. His first win with Team Green now and the Motorola sponsorship. White flag, white. Clean into turn one for the leaders. Only two more opportunities, really, for Tagliani. The first one comes at turn three. <laughs> having a nice break now from Fernandez. Fernandez having to worry about Zanardi. This race isn't over yet. Michael finally being able to just breathe a little bit here, knowing he just has to drive cleanly, keep it on line. Can you believe this? Starts 13th, falls all the way back to the back, comes all the way forward. We mentioned 13th as lucky. It sure looks like it's going to be for Michael Andretti. Looking for his 41st career win. The checkered flag's out. Seventh win at Toronto. First win this year for Michael Andretti. And the 14th year that Michael Andretti has scored a victory in his CART FedEx championship career. On to Shoreline Drive. White flag for Michael Andretti and Jimmy Vassar. And you can hear the cheer from the crowd. Look how close Vassar is. He's running out of opportunities. Look down the inside. Michael held him off. What a fight. The problem on Michael's part, there's going to be no more opportunity to get by. Look at the distance they've laid on the rest of the field.
Think about this. It has been 16 years since Michael Andretti scored his first win at Long Beach. His only other victory. And that is the longest span between wins, should Michael get this one, in Kart FedEx Championship Series history. Final moment for Jimmy Vassar. But he will not be able to get it done. Checkers for Michael Andretti. Jimmy Vassar second. Unofficially, Max Pappas in third. And the crowd is going crazy. <laughs> it's closing in. It's now six tenths of a second. There is Tracy. Pappas is right behind Fernandez. One lap to go, this time by the grandstand. White flag for Paul Tracy. For Fernandez, for Pappas, running closely together. There is Mad Max. Another terrific performance by the Sigma Autosport team. The traffic might be far enough ahead for Paul not to be bothered. I, I think it, it is. is. I think it is. Paul Tracy looking for his third win on the Milwaukee Mile and a place in history as the third winningest driver at this fabled track. Checkered flags for Tracy. There you go, girls. Now you can celebrate. Unofficially, Fernandez in second, Pappas in third, Christian Fittipaldi with a great run to fourth, followed by Michelle Jourdain Jr., Scott Dixon, Michael Andretti in seventh. This lap on a racetrack. Great job for starting last. You had a look at his father, Michelle Jourdain Sr., himself a driver in the champ cars. There's the gap. Hey, One lap to go, white flag. Last lap, last lap right now. This in for Dr. Steve Olvey, the director of medical affairs for CART. Adrian Fernandez has a large bruise and a contusion on his right hip. He'll be transferred to Vancouver General Hospital for further evaluation, but he appears to be otherwise undamaged, and that's great news. You saw Ashley Judd looking on. Here comes Dario. And look how close Dario clipped that inside wall on the king. Saw George and Ashley, they're just twitching with tension. <clears throat> Dario's been frustrated on a few occasions. He had a dominant car on the Oval in Chicago earlier this year, but he had some off-form pit stops that cost him a lot of positions on the racetrack. He was very unhappy then, but I think his confidence in Team Green has not wavered. That elusive chemistry between a driver, his engineers, and his mechanics to get the most out of themselves in their car on race day. And on a day filled with dramatic twists and turns, this day will go to Dario Franchitti. His first victory in two seasons and his second here in Vancouver. The first coming back in 1998. 19th all-time win for Team Green. Hugs all around. In the, the name just went right out of my head. Patrick Carpentier and threw it off the road with a mistake in the late laps. He doesn't want to repeat that. White flag for Dario Franchitti. Looking for his second of the year. The winner in Vancouver looking for his second straight Canadian victory in the Kart FedEx Championship Series. What a drive by Dario. Unbelievable. You know, I, I was saying, okay, now Cristiano's behind. He's going to put the hammer down. We're going to see what he's got. And Dario matched him lap for lap. Mata took back a tenth on that last lap, but he needs a lot more than that, and it doesn't appear that he'll get it. Six wins for Damata this year. The series record is eight, shared by Michael Andretti and Al Unser Jr. But it looks like it's going to have to be another day for Cristiano Damata. Once more through turns eight and nine. Here comes Paul Tracy, Jimmy Vassar, and Michelle Jordan Jr. Jimmy's closing up on Paul. About a half a second that lap. Tracy. Did Jimmy make a lunge at it? <laughs> Apparently not. On the casino straight for the final time, Dario Franchitti looking for his second victory of the year and a big step up in the championship after much frustration in the early races of this year. He picks up win number two of 2002. Dario Franchitti, your winner. Cristiano Ramada second, Tony Kanon third, Paul Tracy fourth, Jimmy Vassar fifth, and Michelle Jordan Jr. Kitty to Damata. And the white flag is coming out.
next time by. And listen, Dario, we heard Oriole lifting in turn one. Dario is actually flat, I believe, through turn one. Right now, Dario's hearing every possible sound in that car, every possible vibration. Going, come on, baby, just make it to the checkered, make it to the checkered. A couple more turns. In Montreal, he picked up his second victory of the season, his first multi-win season in about three years for Dario Franchitti. Today, he will add icing on the cake with his third victory of the year, winning the Rockingham 500, his first victory on an oval. Celebrations in the Team Green Pits. And congratulations to Dario Franchitti, matching his victories in Montreal and Vancouver. We'll be back live to England in a moment.